that was an incident that took place on one road. I want to share with you an incident that took place on another road 2,000 years ago at the height of Jesus' ministry. <coughs> and I've titled this sermon, A Real Simple Thank You. Thank you. Because I believe it doesn't take anything away from us in order to say thank you. So there's a particular passage of scripture that I want to share with you, and if you bring it up on the screen, it has to do with Jesus and this odd situation of him coming in contact with lepers. Take a listen. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voice saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. Watch this. And as they went, they were cleansed. Jesus passes Samar Samaria and Galilee, and as he approaches this village, there are a collection of ten lepers who see him, and don't miss this, they see him afar off. And while they are yet at a distance from him, they cry out, Master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus sees them, he says, go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Now, I know that you're already familiar with this story. A little later on in the story, they make their way toward Jerusalem where the temple is and where the priests reside. And as one of the ten sees that he is healed, he pauses, he stops, he turns around, and he goes back to Jesus. And he says, thank you. And Jesus remarks, were there not ten who were blessed? But out of the ten, only one has returned to say thank you. Watch this. This is what's going to blow your mind. The one that returns is the one who we'd think is the least likely to say anything. Jesus concludes that passage by saying, were there not ten and one returns to say thank you and he is a Samaritan. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it does not hurt to say thank you. Come on, turn to somebody and say, neighbor, it does not hurt to say thank you. Ooh. Beloved, with your permission, I'd like a few moments to unpack this passage. And there are some items that I have observed that I like to illuminate in your hearing. And I pray it blesses you as we walk through the details and the description of Jesus' encounter with a group called lepers. Can I talk up in here? Let, let, let's go to the next slide. Uh, the previous slide gave you the biblical description, but here's what I want you to see. Jesus' homeland consists of three areas, what we today would call counties. And as I tell this story, I want you to imagine three contiguous counties, uh, Queens County, Nassau County, Suffolk County. Now to get from Suffolk County to Queens County, you have to pass through Nassau County. Why? 
because there is water to the north and water to the south. So that the only way to get to Queens from Suffolk is through Nassau. Now, that's the, that, there is a similar scenario here because Jesus lives in the northern region of Galilee. Watch where I'm going. Galilee has towns like Capernaum, where Jesus lived as an adult. Nazareth, where Jesus grew up. But for Jesus to worship, he has to go to Judea, which is the southern region where Jerusalem is. Are you following me? So Jesus lives in the north, Galilee. Where he needs to go is in the south, Judea. But tucked between Galilee in the north and Judea in the south is a territory called Samaria. So that the quickest route from Galilee to Judea is straight through Samaria. But because the Jews did not get along with the Samaritans, Jews would typically leave the north, travel all the way east into an area called Decapolis so they could circumvent going through Samaria. This would add at least two extra days to their journey because the most direct route was through Samaria, but the preferred route was around Samaria. Now, the reason the Jews went around Samaria and the reason the Samaritans went around their area is because they did not want to come in contact with each other. There was enmity, adversity, there was tension, there was conflict between the Jews and the Samaritans. And my sermon time today does not permit me to detail all of the friction between the Samaritans and the Jews. Suffice it to say for today, they did not get along. So under normal circumstances, a law-abiding, politically correct Jew would avoid coming in contact with a Samaritan. Am I talking right? Jesus says to his disciples, watch this, this is going to help somebody. Jesus says to his disciples, we need to go to Judea. But to get there, I'm going to break protocol. I'm going to step outside the box. I'm going to violate man's rules. Can I talk over here? And I'm going to go straight through Samaria on my way to Judea. I need you to turn to a neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad that Jesus went through Samaria because by going through Samaria, he comes in contact with me. <laughs> Can I talk up in here? Listen, listen, listen. If Jesus had not gone through Samaria, the ten who get blessed won't get blessed because they would have missed Jesus. Oh, can I talk up in here? And so the first thing that I need you to see in this story is that Jesus is so radical. He is such a revolutionary. He, is, he, he, he so speaks truth to power until he does not do what everybody expects him to do. But he's, a, he's his own man, and he abides by his own rules. And his rules took him through Samaria when everybody else was running away from Samaria. Now, let me break it down for you. Come on to the next slide. Watch this, beloved. <coughs> Jesus comes to this town, watch this, where there is a mixture of Jews and Samaritans. But what they all have in common is that they're lepers. Don't miss this, beloved. Some are Jews, nine. One is a Samaritan. But what they all have in common is 
leprosy. And leprosy is a literary metaphor. I'm not sure the Bible is really talking about a medical condition. Because oftentimes, leprosy is used as a metaphor in the Bible to represent sin. And if you see it through that lens, you then suddenly understand that when you are overtaken by sin, it will cause you to hang out with some folk who you wouldn't normally hang out with. Can I talk up in here? That, that, that part of the dilemma of sin is that it throws you with people that you might not otherwise take up time with. So now there's a collection of ten lepers, some Jews, one Samaritan, but all lepers. Don't miss this. And when they see Jesus a far way off, they say, Jesus, Master, look at this, have mercy on us. Now, I'm not sure that reading that on the surface, you really come away with a profound understanding of what they were really saying. Because, beloved, beloved, watch this. Jesus is not up close. The Bible is clear that he is a far way off. And the Bible says they lift up their voices, which means they use volume. In other words, to get Jesus' attention and so that Jesus can hear what they're saying, they don't say it in a murmur. They don't say it in a whisper. But they cry aloud. They use their outside voice. And they call out to Jesus. But this is what's going to blow your mind, beloved. They call out to Jesus, but they don't say what lepers normally say. Oh, this is going to mess you up. This is going to mess you up. What they say ain't what lepers say. Lepers are required by law that when they see somebody coming in their direction, they have, to re they have to keep their distance and cry out with a loud voice, unclean, unclean. What they normally would say is unclean, stay away from us because we're unclean. We are required by Levitical law to warn you that what we got is contaminated. It's the cooties. And, and so under normal circumstances, here's what they would say. They would say, they, they would see Jesus afar off. Mm, this is going to help somebody. They would see Jesus from afar off, and they would say, stay away. Unclean. Avoid us because what we have might get on you. So what they say is unclean. Stay away. But that's not what the ten say. They don't say unclean. They say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They don't say unclean. They don't say stay away. They say, Jesus, have mercy on us. In other words, he says, they're saying to Jesus, don't treat us the way everybody else treats us. We have enough confidence, enough faith, and enough belief in you that we believe that you won't treat us the way everybody else that comes in contact treats us. And I'm trying to tell somebody today that there ought to be enough Jesus inside of you that you are able to come in contact with anybody who cries out for mercy. They say, they, oh, Kyrios Christos, Lord, Lord, have mercy on us. Even from a distance, they recognize that if it is the will of Jesus, 
he can turn their lives around. That there's enough power in the hem of his garment to rid them of every unclean item that lives in their body. So rather than say unclean, stay away, they say, Lord, have mercy on us. Or in other words, in the language of our forebearers, while on others, thou art calling, do not <coughs> pass me by. Can I preach in here? Can I see the water? Is it all right? Yes. <coughs> so, so, so what do they say? They say, Lord, have mercy on us. Now, beloved, I know you've read this text so many times, but I'm not sure you've seen what I'm about to show you in the next few moments. They are sick. They are diseased. They are in trouble. But they never ask for a healing. Go, go, go back to the text. Come to the next slide. Next slide. Watch this. Watch this. They don't say, Lord, heal us. They don't say, Lord, touch us. They say, Lord, have mercy on us. So they don't, they don't make self their priority. They're not selfish with what they're looking for and what they're asking for. All they want whew, is a little bit of mercy. The Apostle Paul says, his grace <laughs> is sufficient. Can I talk up in here? And, and so, this is going to blow your mind. They never ask directly for a healing. They ask for mercy. They don't say, Lord, restore us. Lord, heal us. Lord, cleanse us. They say, Lord, have mercy. But wait a minute, that's only one side of the equation. Not only don't they ask for a healing, Jesus never heals them himself. Next slide. He never heals them himself. He says, go Show yourself to the priest. He does not lay hands on them. He does not make a mud pie in the sand like he did the blind man. He does not even speak an incantation over them. He gives them instructions. Remember, Jesus is still at a distance. And from a distance, he says, go Show yourself to the priest. Now, beloved, if you don't understand Hebrew culture, this won't make sense. So let me break it down. According to Levitical law, there was but one person who could certify and validate that you were not a leper. There was only one person who could certify that you were already cleansed. And that was the priest. Watch this. Watch this. And the priests only functioned in the temple. And the temple is in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is in Judea, which means for them to get certified that they're blessed. They got to step outside the box, leave Samaria where they're comfortable, go down to Judea, where the Jews don't like them, but they're not there for the Jews. They're there for their blessing. Bishop, why have you made that point? Here's why. Because <laughs> you come to church because you need something from God. You come to church because worship is your priority. 
Now, it may be that when you get to church, there are folk talking about you on the parking lot. It, it may be there's some gossip being circulated regarding you on the front steps. It, <coughs> it may be that there is some scuttlebutt going on in the pews. But you didn't come to church for the folk in the pews. You didn't come to church for the folk on the steps. You didn't come to church for the folk in the parking lot. You came to church because you needed God in your life. Yes! <laughs> so, 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 so. Let them talk. Let them gossip. Let them scuttlebutt. Let them whisper. Let them murmur. I can bypass all of that because I didn't come here to impress you. I came here because I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Yes. <laughs> Beloved, I'm nearly through. I'm nearly through. Then let me close here. Well, watch this. Watch this. They did not ask to be healed, and Jesus did not heal them. Jesus simply gave them an instruction. Now, hear the instruction and see the result. Jesus does not lay hands on them. He does not baptize them with water. He does not anoint them with oil. He does not speak in other tongues over their lives. He says, go. And this is what's going to blow your mind. The Bible says, as they went, They were cleansed. Not while they were standing still. Not while they were debating whether they should go or not. While, not while they were speculating over what the folk might say when they get down to Judea, into the city of Jerusalem, into the inner court of the temple. Not while they were speculating what the results might be. But when they made up in their mind, I'm going to leave where I am, and I'm going to go where Jesus told me to go. That's when they got cleansed. Watch this. Watch this. <coughs> Beloved, mm. as long as they stood still, they remained sick. They remain diseased. But it wasn't until they stepped out on faith that God began to work a miracle in their lives. Lord have mercy. Well, what, what, are, you, what, what are you trying to say? There is no deficit on the power of God. There is no shortage. There is no lack. There is no supply in demand that's needed from God. The only reason why you may not have received the blessing and the power of God is because you're standing in the same place. And when you step out, that's when... God will move. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Oh. I feel like moving right now. I feel. I feel. I feel power, power, power. Yeah, 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 yeah.
as long as they stood still, they remained lepers. But as they went, do you remember I just said a moment ago, Jesus didn't heal them. They healed themselves. They healed themselves with their obedience. When they obeyed the word of God, then God moved in their lives and changed them from unclean to clean. What you waiting for? <laughs> Why are you still standing still? Why ain't you moving? Let the Lord bless you real good. But you got to move. Yes. Now, beloved, I don't want to dampen your praise. I don't want to rain on your praise parade. I don't want to take you outside on an uncloudy day, on a cloudy day. But can I show you this last item? As they leave, they look at their hands, and their hands look new. They look at their feet, and they do too. And they go, they get so excited over their blessing until they run to their family. They run to their neighborhood. They run to their friends to show them their blessing. But one in the crowd says, before I go there, let me go back and thank the man who gave me my blessing. 
blessing. Now watch this. Beloved, sit, 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 sit down, sit down, sit, sit down. I want you to move from the starting line. I don't want you to have a head start phrase. I, I, I want us all, like my grandsons, to line up and start. Of course, they cheated because they start running before I say go. Well, watch where I'm going. I don't want to play church. I want to have church. And there's a difference between playing church and having church. Now, if you ain't had church yet, let me point this out to you. I need you to see that when the leper came back, and said thank you two things number one Jesus said weren't there ten that got blessed why is there only one standing here in front of me and the one standing in front of me is a Samaritan all right all right let me put it on your street the one who says thank you ain't on the deacon board ain't on the deaconess board ain't a minister ain't an elder ain't in the missionary society not in the choir not on the usher board all them went in another direction but the one who came back was the one strung out on drugs was the crackhead, was the wino, was the alcoholic, was the domestic abuser, was the liar, the cheater. That's the one who came 